Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into some essential mods that will help you improve your Skyrim frame rate and eliminate stuttering. If you're tired of those annoying frame drops and want a smoother gaming experience, stick around because I've got some great recommendations for you. First up, we have Lightened Skyrim. This mod is a game changer when it comes to optimizing your game. It reduces the load on your system by removing unnecessary objects and textures, which can significantly boost your frame rate. It's perfect for those of you with lower-end PCs, or anyone looking to get a performance boost without sacrificing too much visual quality. Next, we have All-in-One FPS Fix. This mod is a comprehensive solution for fixing various performance issues in Skyrim, especially within towns. It removes LOD from Whiterun, Solitude, and Riften, which significantly improves FPS, maintaining a solid 60 FPS. When used alongside mods like Whiterun Has Wall, which adds interior walls to towns, it becomes even more effective as you won't need to view the exterior as often. This mod is perfect for boosting FPS in towns and ensuring a smoother gameplay experience. Next, we have Lossless Scaling. This mod is perfect for those of you who want to play Skyrim at higher resolutions without sacrificing performance. It uses advanced scaling techniques to upscale your game without losing any visual quality. This means you can enjoy a crisp and clear image while still maintaining a high frame rate. Personally use the same settings as shown in the video. And if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, you might find this particularly useful. By enabling image scaling, not only can you boost your frame rate, but you can also enhance the sharpness of your visuals. I found this option to be quite effective, and it performs better than Reshade's sharpening filter. It's a feature I highly recommend for anyone looking to improve both performance and visual clarity. In this section, we're going to explore some fantastic mods and tools that will help you optimize Skyrim for a smoother and more responsive gameplay experience. First up, we have NVIDIA Reflex Support. This mod is a game changer for reducing rendering latency in Skyrim by more than half. It supports SE, AE, and VR versions of the game and utilizes NVIDIA Reflex technology to optimize GPU throughput and latency. This can enhance performance and responsiveness in certain scenarios. It's particularly useful if you're using an NVIDIA GTX 900 series or higher graphics card. While it also supports VR, it may not provide benefits in all cases. Moving on, we have the Papyrus Ini Manipulator. This tool allows you to tweak the Papyrus settings in your Skyrim.ini file for better performance. By adjusting parameters like script processing time and memory allocation, you can optimize how the game handles scripts, leading to smoother gameplay. Be sure to follow recommended settings or experiment to find what works best for your setup. Next, we have Recursion Monitor. This tool is invaluable for detecting broken papyrus scripts stuck in recursion and preventing significant frame rate drops. By stopping specific functions from calling themselves recursively in an infinite loop, it helps prevent frame rate delays and ensures your game runs as smoothly as possible. In this section, we're going to explore the best areas in Skyrim to use 1K textures. If you're looking to improve your game's performance without sacrificing too much visual quality, then this guide is for you. We'll discuss which textures you can downgrade to 1K to get the best balance between performance and aesthetics. First, let's talk about landscapes. Since landscapes make up a significant portion of the outdoor environment, if you cover most of it with grass, it becomes difficult to observe the actual landscape in detail. If you can't notice the difference between 1K, 2K, and 4K textures, lowering the landscape to 1K can significantly improve your game's performance. Next is Northern Roads 1K. I personally use Complex Parallax Texture for Northern Roads 1K, and despite the 1K texture, the parallax effect provides a satisfying visual experience. It also helps reduce stuttering in the field. Since Northern Roads, like landscapes, frequently appears in the field. Using 1K textures instead of high-resolution ones can enhance performance. Next is mountains. 
Since mountains are often viewed from a distance and frequently appear in the game, I recommend using 1K textures. However, because mountains are connected to rocks, using 1000 textures might make the rock textures look low quality and blurry. While I generally recommend 1K, if you find it visually unappealing, you can upgrade to 2K. I use Majestic and Northfire's Photoreal Mountains 3 for Majestic Mountains 1K. I'll include the links in the description for your reference. Now, let's talk about snow. Unlike the previous elements, you can use higher resolution textures for snow. This is because snowy areas generally have fewer trees and almost no grass. So using higher resolution textures for snow won't cause significant frame drops or stuttering. I use Vivid Landscape Snow, but you can use this as a reference. Using 2K textures should be fine. And if you want to enhance the quality further, you can go up to 4K. However, this may vary depending on your computer's specifications. Next, we're going to talk about a crucial step in optimizing your Skyrim experience. Removing unnecessary mods. Over time, we all tend to accumulate a lot of mods. And while they can add great features and enhancements, they can also bog down your system and impact performance. So, I'll guide you through the process of identifying and removing those redundant mods to help boost your game's performance and ensure a smoother, more enjoyable gameplay experience. I will explain this process using Mod Organizer. First, create backup files. It's very simple. Click on the icons in the video to generate backups. To roll back, click on the yellow arrow icons in the video and select the backup file you want to restore. Once you have created backups, right-click in Mod Organizer, select All Mods, and then click Disable All. This will deactivate all mods. Now, starting from the top, enable only the mods you truly want to use based on your gameplay experience. This step requires your personal judgment. Think of it as if you were in a situation where you could only take your most valuable possessions with you. Enable only the essential mods and boldly disable the ones you installed but rarely used. If you have previously organized your mods by categories using separators, this process will be much easier. Enable mods one by one by category, deactivating those you don't need. Don't forget to periodically run Skyrim to check if it works properly. It's also a good idea to create backups during this process. If Skyrim fails to run or errors occur, you may need to roll back to the initial backup file. Therefore, while this task is essential and should be done occasionally, it must be carried out carefully. Regularly create backup files using Mod Organizer to ensure your mod list remains intact. If you have been consistently watching my guide videos, you would know that after completing the previously mentioned tasks, you also need to perform Dindalod and Grasscash operations. This is because if you deactivate certain building, tree, or grass mods, you need to regenerate Dindalod and Grasscash to match the new mod list. While this can be quite time-consuming, successfully completing these tasks means you have reached a significant level of expertise in creating mod lists. Now that you have completed the previously mentioned tasks, I want to commend you for your hard work. This concludes our guide on various methods to improve and optimize Skyrim's FPS. This guide focused more on explanations rather than visuals, and I was quite hesitant about which footage to include during the explanation segments. I hope I didn't make the video too disorganized. I hope I didn't want the video too disorganized. However, I have tried my best to summarize and brief you on the parts I consider most important. Although I have only explained how to add mods so far, I am honored to help you take your mod list management to the next level with this video. If you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe, like, and send a super chat. Support through Patreon is also immensely helpful. With that, I'll wrap up this video and see you next time. Enjoy your Skyrim adventures.